Hello everyone, welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode, I'm going to start off with this little probe that was supposed to deliver supplies over to our Minmus cycler. If you recall, the problem was that this didn't have any antenna, so we have to get really close to Minmus in order to make sure that it can rendezvous with the Minmus cycler. Uh, but the real thing that we're going to be handling in this episode is our jewel missions, which um, the jewel transfer window is in 38 days, and we have two launches to do. One that's really, really expensive, and one that's just really expensive. So it's um, high-stakes stuff. Uh, we do have a budget of 3 million funds, but the, the really, really expensive launch is half a million. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's going to be interesting, and it's got the huge fairing, so got to worry about it wobbling. But anyway, this probe has a maneuver in order to get within 300 kilometers of Minmus. That's the best I could do. Uh, it'll take 500 meters per second, and it has to get into orbit, and then rendezvous with the cycler, which is here. So 1,326 meters per second will hopefully be enough, but the question is whether uh, this is close enough to actually get some sort of communica uh, communication link. Uh, the issue is that we have to make this maneuver uh, not in the best location. I don't have too many possibilities. I guess, I mean, if I wanted to spend a lot of time on it, I might be able to come up with a sequence of maneuvers to cost less and get closer. But this is not super critical anymore because we've got the supplies as Sigmore has 61 days according to this but he's got one of those recycler thingies, um, the Nomomatic and I think that his actual supplies will last longer the, uh, the PBI-1 which is our Minmus base has 110 days uh, Colonization-3 base which is the reactor has 17 days according to this but I think it's longer I hope Maybe we should go over there. I know that the hab is not expired for them. Yeah, let's, instead of time warping to 26 days, let's take a look at them and see maybe if we need to transfer them out or do something with Georgie and Samrina. And then uh, the colonization one base, the main moon base, is perfectly all right. The thing is, uh, Georgie and Samrina can't access the supplies from the colonization one base, which is annoying, right? I think that they should be able to but it's just not showing up here, but let's double check. It said that Georgie and Samina refused to work and then it immediately put them back on duty. And supply-wise, they're they, they really got only 16 days, but hab-wise, they're fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move... I mean, Samarina's a pilot. Georgie is the engineer. Georgie should stay here. I'll move Samarina over to the main base so that uh, she can use those supplies and we'll see how it balances out probably doesn't get us to the right number I mean you figure 16 days double that to 32 days it's still not enough but why it's not getting supplies from over there I have no idea alright EVA Samina from a distance it's a cute little base but it's sort of a mess when you get close to it I don't know where I want her to get in from. Oops, don't bump into the greenhouse. Uh, this is not really... I don't think that's a place for her to get in. I think if we send her into an unexpanded module, she might disappear. So let's not do that. Now, if you recall, we need a scientist over here to do things. Don't have one of those yet. Okay, and now... Well, that's weird. Uh, Georgie's only up to 18 days of supplies. Well, uh, let's go back to him. D does Georgie really eat that much more than Samrina or something? Okay, well, I really don't know if the reactor needs a Kerbal in. It doesn't say so. Well, it's off right now. No PDU in range. If I start reactor, it, it probably starts overheating. Let's just deactivate it. We'll deactivate it, leave it the leave it off, and uh, have Georgie EVA over to the main base. Nope, oh, you can get in. 
half quarters. Okay. I hope they'll be all right. Not enough crew in the Pioneer module. Let's transfer somebody then. Transfer crew. Transfer uh, transfer Georgie into the Pioneer module. We do want that running. We don't have anybody there. We have uh, two in the ag this agricultural module. I don't know if they'd benefit from it if they were all in the HAB module or something. There's room for all of them. Okay, but anyway, everybody's got the necessary food. Let's turn back to that probe, do its maneuver. And uh, actually, it wouldn't get to um, Minmus before we launch our jewel mission. So we'll have to take care of the two jewel missions first, then get it to Minmus and see if it has a connection. Okay, here we are about to do the burn for this little supply second stage haphazard delivery vehicle and really its onboard core can basically keep communication all the way out past the moon even it's really only close to Minmus orbit that loses connection and it's uh, most of the way to Minmus by the time it actually loses connection even though it has no antennae it's really striking but it looks like I need to go further to really make the orbit as it looks the target orbit as it looks well that's that's pretty close okay good all right um, well we'll have to do some sort of inclination correction as well we're definitely off but hey it's a start and we've got 816 meters per second to fix it Let's just briefly see which way around. Okay, that's going that way around. So around here, in 17 days, we're going to want to capture. Maybe we should just get into orbit and then make a rendezvous uh, velocity matching burn and do it like that. So let's see. Well, anyway, let's just add that as an alarm, and then we can move on to our jewel launches. Let's hope those go well. All right, well, let's take care of the more difficult one first. This is Jewel Mission 1. You may recall in the previous episode I introduced this. This has a mining lander, a carbonite mining lander, also a, a carbonite refiner, including the... Um, uh, what you call it distiller here uh, converter here yeah okay I would just want to be careful that the tanks don't you know uh, move up as they do or uh, there was a gap between this decoupler and this procedural fairing base and so sometimes they have gaps sometimes things are shifted uh, when you reload the vessel so I'm just checking on that and yeah uh, thanks to Miko for reminding me to put power on my probes so I've added batteries uh, to make sure that we have that all squared away and they're looking a lot better now yeah but it's tall you can see uh, that's that's all of it this is the mothership if you will with liquid fuel a little bit of oxidizer to replenish the lander and otherwise it's all for this Phoebus atomic rocket motor one thing I didn't fully appreciate about the Phoebus was that it's all it's quite expensive um, let's see I think it's 40,000 compared to 10,000 for the Nerva so Phoebus 40,000 cost uh, 180 kilonewtons which is three times the Nerva and 400 uh, 840 ISP in vacuum so a little bit better than the Nerva but the nerve but the nerve uh, is only 10,000 so there is that but I would like the thrust on this particular mission. It's already uh, 0.31 thrust to weight ratio. I will use the nerve on the next mission, which is lighter than this, so it won't be so bad. But here's the huge fairings. Okay, and then the rest of the rocket is like this. 
So the fairing is about the same size as the as the stages below it. This is gonna be tough. I think it'll be prudent to go straight up for a little while before starting any sort of turn. Definitely not going to be hasty on the turn. Oh, see, there's a little gap there, right there, between these cones and uh, procedural tanks. I don't know why it does that, but it does. Okay. Time to take it out to the launch pad and meet our fate. Alright, well here we are. I think the fairing is actually taller than I thought it was. Yep, this is gonna be really loud too. Let's get some distance. And ignition. And launch. Oh yes, 1.4 G's of acceleration, so, yeah. Should be going. Prograde vector isn't exactly showing any inkling of following along here. Well, it's very slow to anyway. past the speed of sound. Okay, I think we're through the worst of it. And we've got a space apoapsis now. So I'm gonna force to turn a bit more. Before the boosters separate. On the bright side, they won't be landing too far away from the KSC. Okay, booster set. Off they go. Don't collide with each other, you guys. We need you back. Okay, um, let's just go to Apoapsis at this point. I think we can drop the fairings right now. And probably uh, without any thrust going is safer on that. I don't know. All right. Fairing set. Yeah, that looks good. That makes me feel better. Ah, that uh, dish is sort of clipping into the tank. That's sad. Well, always nice when your half a million dollar launch or half a million fun launch doesn't flip. Yeah, of course we work real hard to make sure it wouldn't. Oh. Why is it tilting down? Jeez, come on. You've got gimbling. I don't know why I didn't just... Oh, uh, probably for conversion reasons. I should have just made this a uh, liquid fuel tank. This one on the bottom, though. Alright, the core will deorbit as planned. Ooh, it's got us further than I thought it would. Off it goes, and... Skipper. And that's good enough, 151 by 86. So now, let's extend the solar panels and plot for Jewel. I wonder how many times during this episode I'm gonna say Jupiter instead of Jewel, especially since I did a bunch of Jupiter missions on the recent Realism Overhaul episode, so sort of got Jupiter in my mind as well. We'll see. I'm not getting the recovery of the boosters I'm I'm pretty sure that we were out of physics range when we let go of the boosters. I mean when I mean we no, well, I don't know. We did do a lot of coasting. Have they reached the ground yet? They definitely should have. Did we lose I can't believe we lost the boosters. I hope that's not the case. But I think it is. Hmm. That's a flyback booster. No, uh, Jewel Mission 1 Debris. Those must be, the, well, not must be, but I hope those are the boosters right there. Let's see, is there four of them? Yeah, there's four of them. Okay, we can still hope. Gotta worry, those are really expensive. 
All right, I've plotted a trajectory that will avoid needing to do a mid-course adjustment, but it will take a little bit more delta V at first. It'll take 2,200 instead of maybe what's usually 1,900 1, kind of um, ejection burn. And the goal is a lathe approach. As you can see here, we've got a lathe periapsis of 115.7 kilometers, which will get us into orbit around Jupiter with a, a, an inclination about seven degrees with respect to lathe. So that'll be fine-tuned as we get into the dual system, of course, but this is about as good as I can do because I've been manipulating the nodes by a hundredth of a meter per second, and anything else would get us into lathe atmosphere, which we don't want to do. Um, yeah, so, I mean, if we could set the target as foul, that changes a lot of things. I wonder why. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, I, I doubt I'm going to get anything like what it's suggesting. Anyway. Oh, there's an interesting one. Leif periapsis and another Leif periapsis. Why don't we leave it there? That's sufficiently interesting. <laughs> that, uh, well, I guess we go around in like uh, some multiple of, well, anyway, we, we meet Leif again. So that'll definitely give us some gravity assists. You can't really get gravity assists around uh, Jupiter with its moons. Uh, obviously Jupiter itself can help, but the, its moons aren't quite so big compared to itself. We did get the four boosters back, and stage value 52,000, we got 46,000 for each. So that's good. That's almost uh, 200,000 back on a half million fund launch, so that is... Excellent. Let's point at the node and start. We should have really already started burning. See, already it's all gone gone wrong. I assure you. Talking too much. Go figure. All right, separation and nuclear engine ignition. I wonder how far off we'll be. Okay, that's a pretty nice view right there. Yep, that's a, that's a scenic view, but we're getting close to the end of the burn here. Let's take it off of Smart ASS and take a look at what's really going on on the map. That's our orbital approach line going away from Jewel. Hold on. Hold on. That's not what's supposed to happen. Let's replot. Let's replot. Okay, well, it looks like the best thing to do is make course adjustment after all, so it'll cost us 81.8 .8 meters per second. We'll still be able to hit lathe. Look at all those little uh, indicators there. Yep, lots of stuff, but we're going to have to fine tune it once we get out there in order to make sure that we minimize our inclination with respect to the dual system but we'll add this alarm for now and that'll be that it looks like it's all set for that particular part of the mission and uh, well we could probably rotate it a little bit better mm. there we go that's better okay uh, it's an 10 IR out. It looks like it should be maintaining communication quite easily. I think it should have had some of the commutrons up here, right? Or maybe not. Oh, I hope I didn't forget commutrons on the lander. Ooh, boy. I don't see him. There's a lot of other communitrons on the probes and all, but I don't see where I put them on the lander. Well, we'll leave that for when we get to it. For now, uh, thankfully, at least it's up here and on its way to Jewel. And now let's take care of the other launch. The goal of Jewel Mission 2 is to land probes on four of Jewel's moons, 
And so I've tried to use this truss structure in the stock fairing to stack the probes, but I've never done this before, so I don't know how well it will work. I've, I've never used a truss structure, so we'll have to see. But the one up here is for Tylo, that's why it has the larger tank. Uh, this one is for Leif, that's why it has the parachutes. And then uh, I guess uh, Val and either Bop or Paul, uh, whichever one that we don't send the Carbonite uh, lander to. So yeah, the Carbonite lander will uh, handle landing on a Bop or Paul, uh, and then we'll send one of these to the other one. Uh, the well, we've got some science. We've got this weird ablati ablation laser light imager. We've got two goo containers each. Of course, we've got the thermometer. We've got this exo kerbal core drill. But yeah, I mean, we really need to need to unlock some more scientific instruments for these. But in any case, uh, should be interesting. Of course, we don't have RTGs. That's why we're using solar panels still. So that's a downside. But you can see they each have independent communications. They all have one of these HD55 antennas. And they also have Commutron 16s each. And then we have this stage. This is the promised nervous stage. Or nerve. Come on, come on. There we go. So Nerve, it's got its own dishes, it's got solar panels. Um, yeah, I think uh, if we take a look at how everything extends, these extend down, so they shouldn't get in the way of the solar panels. It just looked like they might. Um, because I'm worried about how these probes are going to get out of the truss structure, I've added RCS to this part, and we've got an RCS tank inside the service bay along with a reaction wheel and the controller to make sure that it can maneuver out of the way of the probes that it deploys, hopefully. And otherwise, it's not showing the correct delta V here. It's showing the correct time, but I don't know why it's not showing the correct delta V. If I take off this stage, you can see it's supposed to have 4,239 meters per second and a 0.26 thrust to weight ratio. But for some reason, even though this gets added below it, and you can see uh, there's the engine, and then this is this decoupler, so I don't know why it reduces the delta V like that. Also, the same thing is happening with the skipper stage here. It's actually got much more delta V and thrust to weight ratio, but it's being cut by half for some reason that I can't quite understand. So, that's peculiar. I'm worried that that indicates that something is going wrong. Otherwise, uh, we've got boosters, we've got the standard recoverable system with the standard colonization core. Uh, we're using these kickback boosters, and I've put parachutes to make sure they get recovered as well, hopefully, assuming that we're far enough away from them so that we're out of physics range. But yeah, I guess that's about it. Let's, uh, well, there's definitely not supposed to be any Kerbals in. Let's take it out to the launch pad and see how it goes. Well, what can I say? Uh, the Delta V stats are reading something completely different here and 1000 meters per second more than I thought that the nerve stage would have. So there's a certain amount of uncertainty there. But here we go. SAS is on. Throttle is up. It's looking pretty good. This is a good looking rocket. I think you'll agree. Yep. But let's see how it works. And launch. Okay, separation. Boosters are off. Let's try and get away from them. Oh, I think they they might have collided there, I don't know. Okay, we're flat. Stage set, stage set, and skipper. We can dump the fairings now. And they are confetti fairings, unfortunately. Let's get at least a top probes the commutrons out if 
to let me. There we go. And that's an orbit, 116 by 87 to 88. All right, let me plot for Joule again. Okay, so for this one, I've just plotted it uh, with uh, prograde burn, and we're going to do a mid-course adjustment since we ended up doing one with the other other mission anyway. We'll just uh, plot this with the mid-course adjustment, and let's go. Skipper stage will start us off, and then we'll move on to the nerve. Okay, separation. And ignition. Okay, we'll try and match our outgoing orbit, but we will... I don't know. That seems to be going too far, doesn't it? Even though we haven't finished burning. Yeah, I'd say that's too far. Let's pull it in. Trouble is, it's tough to tell because we don't really get the encounter that we're looking for until the mid-course adjustment. So, but we should be closer than this. Okay, well, this is a plot worthy of, uh, well, worthy of note. We're coming in here along the purple trajectory, I think. hope that's right. Yeah. And then we hit Tylo. And we pass by Tylo on this side at 879 kilometers. And that brings us into orbit, which is nice and flat. It took some doing, but I got it nice and flat. And then that comes around, and the dual periapsis is 217 kilometers, which I don't recall if it's safe or not. But if I go like that, well, that's probably safer. But it's not quite as interesting. And you know, uh, one one hundredth of a meter per second, and this is the mid-course adjustment, uh, makes a difference between 214 kilometers and 5,170 kilometers. There's another lathe possibility over there, uh, but we can't really hit it because of how touchy this is. Oh, there we are. Um, and then a lathe encounter is was the point. So either we get a lathe encounter over there, or a lathe encounter over here. All flat though. This, look at this. This one is saying that this is going to be flat too. Only uh, 1.3 degree difference in inclination. So that's pretty impressive. I'd like a Tylo flyby and a lathe flyby. We have probes for both of them. So we'll say that that is our planned maneuver. I doubt I'm going to do it as precisely as I need to in order to get those encounters, but we'll hope. All right, so I think that's it for trying to send stuff to Jewel on this transfer window. Let's turn back to that, that uh, supply mission, I guess we'll call it, that second stage that was being, bringing some supplies to the Mimicycler and see if that works out. By the way, we did get back the core from that mission, from Jew Mission 2, as well as the kickback boosters. So that was all successful. Now we have to time warp six days to get into Minmus SOI. We do not have communication right now, but we're hoping that we will have communication once we get there. In the next episode, we're going to be doing Duna missions. We'll make sure that everything is properly supplied. I'm looking at you, Sigmor. Uh, otherwise, everything should be uh, all right, except for Rodsby's habitat situation, maybe. We'll take a look at that. And then Duna missions, finally. We have contracts for that. We don't have any contracts for the Jewel stuff, by the way. We're doing those pro bono. Oh boy. Well, if this isn't going to be able to rendezvous, we're just going to discard it. Yeah, no sign of communication at all. Electric charge is there, so it's just uh, the range on the onboard antenna. Again, when it comes to communicating with uh, the bases on Kerbin, it can, it can manage it uh, beyond the moon. But when it comes to relay, with these guys, not so much.
Oh, wait. We have the barest inkling of a signal. All right. Well, let's not waste it. Retrograde. Well, let's start burning. Looks like that's relatively the right idea to handle the inclination situation, so... Know that. And... Fix. And I'm looking at the closest approach distance up there in the rendezvous, and... It was possible to do something a little bit better. Um, okay, seven kilometers. We'll go with that for now. It's a gap like that. Once we get up to Apoapsis, we should be able to bring it then it closer in. If we have communication. Oh, we've lost communication. I don't know if the Mimicycler can act as a relay. We we're awful close. I wonder what is acting as a relay. Well, this this rendezvous is not working out for us. Okay, now we've got communication. Okay, well, match speeds with the target. Uh, okay, point to the target. It looks like uh, Supply Master 3, or our base basically is what's acting as the relay. Fair enough. Okay, we're going very fast now. Let's slow down. Okay. And make sure we're targeting while controlling from here. And I have no idea where the docking port is right now. That's Earth and the Moon. That is not the mission coming in. That is. Okay, well let's have just this just turn and face the target. I hope this docking port is an okay docking port. Clampatron docking port. It looks normal, it's not one of those construction ones. Sigmore doesn't really need that much by way of supplies. The base on Minmus actually has just about as much as he does. But, and that's not quite true. Uh, I think he's better off because of the Anomomatic. Anomomatic is a powerful thing. But eventually it'll run out of fertilizer, so... Let me check on the other side that it's not still on Smart ESS. Let's just have SAS. Okay. Otherwise, there would be a lot of wiggling. Okay, looking good. And magnetism. Okay, now, where do we store supplies? I guess that's one place. Now he's got 158 days. We'll also refuel him using whatever leftover fuel there is in here. We can use the RCS to deorbit it. Okay, and then he's got a bunch of little packs up there. Alright, well we filled up the Minmus Cycler with supplies, but there are still 152 supplies in this supply vessel. And so we'll keep it hooked up for now. Otherwise, we've drained all the liquid fuel and oxidizer. It's still got some extra mob propellant, but of course, that's what we're going to use to deorbit it as well. But I did try and top off the mob propellant in the cycler. Uh, and technically, this is the cycler. This is an uh, extra ship up here. I forgot what I called that. But that's actually where Sigmore is in. But yeah, so we'll keep it hooked up and it's probably not good to uh, decouple it right now anyway since we don't have a connection back right now. So yeah, when I do decide to dispose of it by crashing into Minmus's surface, we should make sure that we do have a connection. 
Alright, but uh, mission successful as far as delivering supplies and uh, this has been the dual mission day and next time around we will have the Duna missions so look forward to that. But on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.